Right then, troops, welcome to the latest edition of uh, Geordie Hikers Travels on the weekend. <laughs> uh, where are we at today, Steph? We're at Cragside today. Cragside today. Uh, we've just pulled up in the car park. Uh, just going for a little walk around the car park now to try and get settled. Um, my voice has gone off the Derby day yesterday. Newcastle beating Sunderland 3 0. Up the mags. Uh, so I was uh, looking forward to it. First time we've been, isn't it? Yeah, we've been waiting to come here for absolutely ages. But, um, we finally got a National Trust pass, so mm. we're here. Aye, got the membership sorted. Uh, and we've just got here and he's just said like half of it's closed, hasn't <laughs> he? So, Pretty typical. Aye, so it's closed due to the weather, due to the ice or something, but the weather looks fine to us, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, it looks absolutely sound, so... Um, we'll still get a good walk in though and show you around. Aye, we'll get a nice little walk in and we'll take you around on a tour with us, so come with me and uh, enjoy Cragside. Steph failed to do the little transition there, like, so I'll, uh, I'll cover it off. Come with me. Cragside, there's a little maze here yeah, that we're gonna go through. The merry maze. The merry maze. <laughs> now, my brother told me. I was gonna say someone once told me, and it was definitely you. It was my brother. <laughs> my brother, if you're watching this, he told me that if you go left in a maze, right, if you always take the first left that you see, you'll always come to the end of the maze. Now, drop in the comments if you think that's a load of ru rubbish, because well, we'll try it. Let's now. try it now. So it's only a small maze, so let's take the first left, yeah. <laughs> what? That didn't work, did it? <laughs> First left that we're taking, we've got uh, we've got. Oops, you went the wrong way. The correct answer is another way. So, Peter, if you're watching this, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong, and we're not impressed. You know, we're not I impressed, you were full mate. Of fact. You know what it is, I mate. You taught me that anyway. <laughs> My brother was the cleverest kid in his year at school. Twelve GCSEs he's got, but he doesn't know his way around a maze. <laughs> So Cragside was once the home to William and Margaret Armstrong. Apparently they were the ultimate park couple. And they shared this vision of creating a beautiful landscape and garden within the heart of the home. And not only um, was the landscape beautiful, but it was functional too. So I'll just show you. They used engineered lakes, which is just right here. Um, and the adaptation of experimental technology the f home was the first place in the world to be lit using hydroelectricity. Like, how cool is that? The first place in the whole world, like yeah, in the northeast, in Rossbury. Unreal. Look at those reflections today on the water. Looks like an upside down world, doesn't it? Absolutely stunning that like. Look at that man. Wow. So this house here is one of the main attractions uh, why people come to Cragside, this area here. Now it's a bit of a shame that we can't go inside and visit it today uh, due to um, damage, due to the weather. But hopefully we can come back and show you inside the house itself because apparently there's some beautiful objects um, from the 1800s when it was created. Um, now aside from that, as Steph mentioned before, this was the first house in the whole world to be uh, lit up by hydroelectricity. Now that's such a, a big statement and it actually brought a lot of people over from different areas of the world to come and visit this house and it brought a lot of money into the northeast economy and Northumberland itself. Now you can imagine inside apparently there's some beautiful objects that you can see and um, some really really sort of high-end furniture from back in the day and that was brought from people that were visiting um, the owners of the house uh, in the 1800s who wanted to come and see this first home lit up uh, at the time because it was such an innovative thing to be done um so when you come to cragside apart from just taking in the beautiful gardens hopefully you can come in on a day when the house is actually open to the public um and you can actually go in and see some of the beautiful furniture the beautiful surroundings 
and the rooms that are decorated uh, to take in. But when you come, make sure that you, you know, you have in your mind that this was the first home in the whole world to be lit up by hydroelectricity. And that's such a, a big thing for the Northeast. One thing I will say is if you're coming to Cragside, make sure that you're prepared for the fact that the actual house area might be closed. Like we've came today and it's absolutely freezing. And we weren't expecting to, to actually do the outside grounds in the garden area of the house, but you can see the lake here, yeah, it's completely frozen over. Uh, so we haven't really worn the right clothing, have we? Like we've worn hoodies and trousers, but we've got the trainers on, which is a proper schoolboy era. So if you are coming here, make sure that you pack the right gear, the right clothes and the right footwear. Because if you don't do the house, if it is closed due to bad weather like it is today, then at least you can enjoy the gardens and the grounds outside um, with the right clothing on and the right walking equipment. Uh, and you just feel a lot more comfy, don't you? Like, it's very slippy today, but we've only got trainers on. So I fell off on my arse a couple of times. <laughs> but uh, aye, that's one thing that we've learned from this. So make sure you bring the right clothing and equipment to, to have the best day possible, really. Just down here you've got what's called Tumbledon Lake Dam and that was created after a severe drought in 1895 where the owner William Armstrong of actual Cragside uh, decided that he created a dam uh, across the Debden Burn over here which is just a lake area um, and that created a head of water that powered the, the hydraulic engine and the hydraulic engine was actually located over here in the pump house and what that did was essentially it pumped litres and litres of fresh water from here up into there up into the upper areas of the house over here and that meant that um, they had fresh water whenever it was needed in, in the case of a, a, a drought or anything like that that could be channeled into the house and used for bathing or for refreshments uh, for guests so really really innovative uh, given the time Up the Cragside uh, house now, absolutely stunning. First time we've been here, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Well, honestly, it's breathtaking when you first see it. Um, if you're a National Trust member, obviously it's free and the parking's free as well. But um, if it's your first time and you don't have a National Trust membership, it's 25 quid, is it? Yeah, 25 pound each. 25 pound so. per person, yeah. Which is probably why we haven't really been in the past because <laughs> it's actually we've quite. We've wanted to come here for like, well, the past year, haven't we? Nah, like, yeah. We'll keep saying I'll go to Cragside and then. The price is just put off to be honest. Like it is quite expensive, like that's fifty pounds for both of us. Yeah, exactly. Um, so probably recommend getting a National Trust membership because obviously you get to enjoy yeah. loads of places for free. Well, especially one for Christmas, like we got one for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> We're just walking up to a place called the Rock Garden now, which is meant to be lush. Yeah. Steph's just hiding behind us. Hello. <laughs> Um, we we're just talking there like and I know it's 25 quid but we probably would have paid it like if we didn't have a National Trust membership like if the main grounds were open uh, of Cragside itself behind me probably worth it it probably is worth it because it's absolutely lush breathtaking place like it's been like a good few hours yeah though like mm. like we have probably been here like an hour and like the house isn't even open Aye. and we're just getting to it now so like it's a beautiful place to go walk as well Ah, it's stunning, absolutely stunning. So we would recommend it whether you've got a National Trust membership or not. Yeah. <laughs> Just a great day out, like, absolutely beautiful. Get yourselves here. What's the sign here which says that the house will be closed until spring 2024. So if you do want to come and visit the actual house itself rather than just the grounds, um, it'll not be open until then. 
So here's a fun fact for you today. Um, the house actually sits atop a sandstone crag, which gives the estate its name Cragside. With views like that, I honestly couldn't think of a better house to live in. This is Northumberland. Main bedroom there. Wake up. And that's your view. Spectacular, that light. What else that's watching but when I was little and even still now to be honest I absolutely loved skimming stones on the sea and me and Steph have just found this frozen lake at Cragside found a belt a little stone for skimming so we're going to try and skim it across it might just go straight through the ice but let's see if we can make it from this side to the other side <laughs> Steph you'll have to get your camera skills good yeah like let's give it a good go come on then oh oh he's just like connected middle. one <laughs> <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Got to the end, didn't it? Got to the end. <laughs> hey, up that mags. <laughs> Steph's turn in our debut at Skimming Stones. Let's see how much of a success this is. Oh, God. Ready? Right. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the pose like to start off with. There. Look at the pose. <laughs> So she's got the posture right, but it's all about that finesse when you skim it. Can't you make the other side? Go for it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Pure shocking. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a nightmare, that. Oh, she wants another go. She's got another stone. You know I'll be here until I get it across the <laughs> No chance you're going to beat me, like. I won't let you win. I'll be here right. tonight. She's going again. Round two. Oh, it's a plopper. It's a plopper. <laughs> I'll tell you what, like, she's gotten out on the Rambler, has she? <laughs> She'll be here all day. Luckily, I'm driving. I'll just take off and leave her. <laughs> she won't admit defeat. Right, last go, last go. No. <laughs> right, go on. Let's have a look at the stone first. All right, that's a good that's skimmer. Cool. That's a good skimmer, that, like. Is a massive, like, pool in the No, no, let's not blame the pool. It's a little bit better, I like, but there's still a lot of room for improvement in your skimming, like. We'll have to take her down the beach. We'll get her doing, Whit we'll get her doing Whitley Bay Beach and get her some practice in on the sand. Outtake. This is Scott's fifth um, try, so just FYI. Three. So over to the right here, you have the clock tower crag side, and we'll just walk up to it. But essentially, William Armstrong, um, he created this in the 1800s, and it was as a means of, he was a stickler for keeping time, um, and he was religious around uh, certain times of the day, of the working day. So he used it to track uh, different times within the working day, uh, within crag side itself. And 300 people were actually employed here at the time. So this is where they would come, they would walk up here and they would come up here and collect their wages at the end of a working day um, and they'd pop into this uh, clock tower to collect them. Um, <laughs> so there's Steph, she just did our week's graft and she's off to collect our... Uh, <laughs> anyone there? Mustn't have done a, mustn't have done a good enough job. <laughs> P45 in the post for you. <laughs> But another interesting building within Cragside itself. Beautifully created. It's so slippy here today, all this ice down here. That means Steph have had to link arms like this. Because <laughs> we've got what well, Adidas Sambas on. We haven't rolled the right footwear. So we're just having to shuffle like little penguins down here. Hoping that we'll get past this black ice. Down here. Without slipping our. <laughs> we've nearly made it. We've nearly made it. Within the gardens itself is this beautiful area here. Steph's there, like, paint me one of your French girls. Paint me like one of your French girls, rocking the poses. Paint me like one of your Geordie girls. Like one of your Geordie ramblers. But look at that. 
So people would come here uh, during the working day, back when they worked at Cragside, and sit here and just take in the sun, the sunrise or the sunset. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful area I just sit. Maybe have a spot of tea, coffee, some food, and just take in the beauty. As part of the gardens at Cragside, you've got this sort of like, it's like a greenhouse called the Orchid House, or the Orchard House. Um, and if we just go through, honestly, has anyone seen Harry Potter? when they're making the potions. Honestly, how much does this room look like that? I was just saying that to Steph, but she's not a big Harry Potter fan. But I swear down, in one of the Harry Potters, this looks like the room it was made in, like. If anyone's got the link with the scene from Harry Potter, put it in the comments down, because uh, she doesn't believe it. But I swear down, it looks like this was the room, like. Surely someone watching this knows what I mean. <laughs> These plant pots here are quite significant and quite innovative, really, um, because in 1870, when this uh, orchard house was created, um, these plant pots could be turned due to the cast iron base that they're created in once a day. And that just allowed for the, uh, the fruits to be, the, the ripening of the fruits over time so that different sun areas of sunlight out there could get to them uh, to create the best fruit possible at the time. So quite innovative uh, for the 1800s and quite significant, really, for Cragside. I'm a little bit gutted that the house is closed today. Apparently it's um, an art and crafts pleasure palace. Now, if anyone's into their textiles and interiors like me, um, they'll know that art and crafts was like a massive movement in the 1800s. Um, and it began in Britain as well. If anyone knows William Morris, he was a massive influence to that movement um, and he designed like really decorative wallpapers and textiles for the home um, using hand carved like wooden blocks and you can just imagine like how long that must have taken um, and these technologies are still used today I mean obviously they've like evolved but some of those like original like hand carved blocks are still used in the textiles industry today um, so hopefully next time we we'll come here we'll be able to show you around and hopefully we'll get to see some like really nice interiors in the house because like looking from the exterior i'm guessing the interior is going to be beautiful as well if you are visiting with the kids as well um i was just reading a leaflet that they provide at the main reception and they've got like four sort of really good attractions that are really good for families and can keep the kids busy as well while you explore if you want um, so one of them is called an explorer bag uh, activity, which is basically where the staff will provide your child with um, a bag and that's ba that bag will be full of, um, it's got magnifying glasses in, um, it's got like uh, books to draw in and basically the kids can just go around look at objects within Cragside Hall itself and um, you know learn a little bit more about the history. Uh, so it's quite educational for them too. You've also got a labyrinth called Nelly's Moss and that's just basically a maze of weaving paths uh, within Cragside itself and the surrounding areas where the kids can just go and explore a little bit. It's not really a big long track, but it'll tire them out uh, if you just want to uh, have a nice relaxing day as well. You've got trails which are, are child friendly, not long as well. So one called the Smart Trail, which is within Cragside House. And again, that's um, it just talks here around the evidence of Armstrong's innovation and technology all over the house. So it's quite educational as well, if you want to bring that sort of element to the children as well when you're here. And there's an adventure play area called Crozier. Uh, and again, that's just really child friendly and um, just makes it a bit more of a fun day out for the kids as well when you bring them. So there's four sort of key areas if you are bringing your children with you. Um, and hopefully you've learned a thing or two from that. Uh, and I'm sure if you do visit reception can, can help point you in the right direction for them. We've had a lovely day, haven't we? Yeah, it's been really nice. Nice Sunday outing. <laughs> Aye, unreal, like, perfect for families, perfect for any age, would you say? Yeah, there's like loads of families, yeah, loads of kids. I think there's a play area somewhere. Mm -hmm. I've seen loads of people walking the dogs as well, haven't we? So uh -huh. perfect for if you just want to take the dog for a walk. And we were just saying as well there, like, there's, it's all like signposted, so there's loads of different walks. Like, we've already done like two or three of them already. Um, but there's loads of different paths. All the paths are like really well laid out, as you can see here. And it just takes you in lush scenery, forests, yeah. like nice terrain. 
The one that we're on at the minute, though, it's a bit of an incline, so uh -huh. just make sure you bring like good boots with you. Aye, I, I think I've mentioned earlier in the video as well. Like, make sure when you come, you bring the right gear. Like, we were expecting to just be indoors all day, weren't we? So we stupidly wore well trainers, matching trainers, though. Two for one. <laughs> um, but I make sure you bring your hiking boots and proper clothing as well, just to keep warm because it's freezing today. So cold. But I just a beautiful walk, isn't it? A beautiful day out. Yeah, definitely um, come back. Yeah. Well worth it as well, even if you're paying the one-off money, like 25 quid we mentioned, it's, just, it's yeah. worth it to be fair. Um, even like not going in the house though, like just going on the walk, it's really nice. Oh, 100%, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, but I, that, that's being us. Um, there's a cafe on site as well for teas, refreshments. Uh, I think they sell food as well, so you don't really need to bring scram with you if you're hungry. And um, I hopefully we'll do another video where we can take it inside and show you about a little bit and give you a bit more history to the actual building rather than just the landscape outside but um thanks for coming with for today and uh we we'll look forward to taking you on, on the next journey next yeah. week where will it be <laughs> any guesses and, and if you've got anywhere you'd like where to go in the lake district northumberland anywhere in the uk to be fair we'll yeah. try and get to so drop it in the comments and uh we'll be happy to take you with her and try and teach you uh, a little bit on the way too with a bit of fun so <laughs> cheers all see you